Bam! Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So, here we go. You know that, uh, of course, uh, chemistry teachers make more money than other teachers. Chemistry professors make more money than other professors. And that's why we have the ability to burn money. Because it's burning a hole in our pocket. So, before I get to burn these $200 bills, let's make sure that what we have is a flammable liquid, first of all. So, here we go. Here's a little bit of liquid here in this. I'm gonna light this on fire. Check this out. So, that is most certainly a flammable liquid. It's on fire. Yeah, everybody likes fire. Fire is fun. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So let's watch that liquid burn. And it is most certainly hot, and it is a liquid. It's actually a mixture of um, ethanol and water in a certain ratio. And this is getting a little bit hot here, okay? But I am gonna let this burn here. So that notice the color of the flame here. That's very important, okay? All right, sweet. So you do see that that is burning, and it just burned out. Fabulous. Let's check this out. So same liquid now is in my beaker. This is a beaker, of course, uh, this is what I normally drink my coffee in, but today we're not going to do that. We're going to actually burn this $100 bill. Check it out. So I'm going to take this $100 bill, I'm going to put it in this liquid here like this. Fantastic. Make sure that it's nice and soaked so that we can get all that fire in there. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hang on to this with some crucible tongs. Now, let's light this $100 bill on fire. Oh. Ooh! Now that is fun. Now, I touch it now, and it is still damp. But the $100 bill has not been burned. It's still there. So, that's a beautiful thing. Now, we're going to check out one more thing. My students always say, hey, Mr. Montbriand, um, how about that last test? Can you burn that last test for me? Sure. Here it is. Last test. Let's burn that last test and let's see how that goes. So I'm going to stick that, of course, in my same beaker of liquid, flammable liquid. Of course, you do know that. And let's see how that test turns out. Doesn't look like they got all the score, all the points on this one. So they do want this one burned. So let's check out and see what happens here. So let's light this on fire. Oh yeah, baby, that's on fire. Oh, and it's still okay. Huh, hey, how about Mr. Mark Brown? How about this? You burn a periodic table. Periodically, I like to burn periodic tables. That's always lots of fun too. So let's put this in our flammable liquid right here. We douse it in our flammable liquid. And of course, we gotta douse it all the way in our flammable liquid. Yep. There it is. Now we've got ourselves a periodic table in flammable liquid. Oh my gosh. Now we got a periodic table on fire. <laughs> that is a cool thing. Now, notice that this did not burn, but yet this is paper and it does burn. So we can see that clearly from this, that this is paper and that it is not some kind of special paper of any kind. It is a periodic table that's made out of paper and yes, it does burn. And why would I wanna do that? Well, I'm gonna try another activity here and it is another $100 bill, okay? But this time I'm gonna burn it in a different liquid and most certainly this liquid is flammable as well. So I'm going to put that in here. I got my hundred dollar bill in here. And this is also a flammable liquid. Hmm. Let's see how that turns out. Pull this out of my flammable liquid. Yeah, see, there it is. We're going to pull it out of my flammable liquid. All right, sweet, spectacular. And let's light this hundred dollar bill on fire. Oh, baby, that is beautiful. Okay, all right. So, 
hundred dollar bill, still good. Still good. That's what I like to hear. All right. I'm going to explain what this is all about here in just a second. So hold on to that. See you in a bit. Bye for now. Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So you just saw a cool demonstration of burning money. Yeah, baby. So everybody likes to burn money because it's burning a hole in their pocket. So let me give you an explanation. But first, let's go over what two liquids that I have. So the first liquid was a flammable liquid and it had ethanol and sodium chloride in it. The second flammable liquid was ethanol and lithium chloride. Okay. So here's the explanation of what happened and exactly why did my $200 not actually catch on fire and burn and why do I still have that money here with me today? So the $100 is soaked in a 50% ethanol solution and there's the formula for you and that is C2H5OH. Okay, And all alcohols have that OH characteristic group. That's why it's ethanol and F has um, two carbons. The AN in the ethanol um, means that there's a single bond in between the two carbons. And the OL designates an alcohol and it designates that OH group at the end. Okay. Now it is actually key that this is a 50% mixture of ethanol and water. If it was a greater percentage of ethanol, then my money would actually burn and there would not be enough water in there to do its purpose in this whole activity here. If I tried to burn my $100 in a 100% solution of ethanol, this would also not work and I would lose my $100 because it would catch on fire and there would be no water in it. So the key is that there's enough ethanol to have a flame and enough water to do that special thing that the water does. So this is a combustion reaction, which of course all combustion reactions produce heat. So here is the balanced equation for this combustion reaction on fire. So I'm hoping that you see the ethanol, that C2H5OH, it's a liquid. Okay, the necessary component for a combustion is oxygen gas. So without the oxygen gas, of which there's plenty of it here, about 20%, okay, um, without that oxygen, that um, ethanol would not have burned. And the products of a complete combustion reaction is carbon dioxide and water. Now notice that this is a balanced equation um, and the carbon dioxide is a gas and the water I have both in the gaseous state and in the liquid state because in this um, reaction here, some of the water vaporized and evaporated and went to the gaseous state and some of it remained in the liquid state. You should see that there's a number on the product side and that's the combustion of enthalpy. That's a delta H term. It's typically a negative value when written as just the delta H equals a negative 1,366.8 kilojoules per mole. But I've put it within the equation, within the balanced equation, so that's why it's a plus sign and it's on the product side. Being that this number, 1,366 kilojoules, is on the product side, this indo indicates that this is an exothermic reaction which produces a tremendous amount of heat. How much heat? 1,366 kilojoules of energy. Okay, so as the money burns, some of the water in the ethanol water mixture, it's a 50% solution, remember, some of that water in that mixture evaporates, meaning it's vaporized. Okay, that water absorbs the heat energy produced in this combustion reaction. That is absolutely necessary. This is due to the fact that water has an extremely high specific heat at 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And when vaporized, um, absorbs all that energy that this combustion reaction produces. Therefore, um, that's why the $100 does not burn. This evaporation of the water keeps the $100 below the ignition temperature of the money. Now, U.S. currency is very special. So furthermore, paper money um, is not paper at all, but it is 25% linen and 75% cotton. 
Therefore, U.S. paper currency is essentially a fabric and therefore porous. And that's why it's essential on this one. And that's why my um, $100 bills were wet at the end of the combustion reaction. They were warm as well. So some of that heat energy um, burned off some of the water, but yet not all of the water was burned off and some of the water remained inside the fabric of the $100 bills. And that kept that $100 bill below the ignition temperature, okay? Um, hopefully you notice um, a blue and a yellow colored flame when the $100 bill was burned. The blue flame is due to the burning of the ethanol and ethanol um, and methanol and propane all have a characteristic um, blue flame, okay? But the yellow flame is due to the sodium chloride and the, specifically the sodium uh, um, itself. So sodium has a characteristic yellow flame that is very, very bright. And that makes this reaction a little bit more dramatic, right? If you just saw a blue flame, it would be hard to see. That's why I'm wearing the white shirt here today. But that yellow flame was very dramatic and it looked it was certainly on fire, okay? The burning of the multiple choice test, the scantron, and the periodic table was in the same 50% ethanol solution as the $100 bill. And that's why you notice the characteristic colors of those as well, being the little bit of blue and quite a bit of yellow, okay? And paper is uh, a little bit absorbent as well. And sometimes when this demonstration is done, some of the paper actually burns on the scantron, on the edges or on the periodic table. But this time it didn't, okay? The second $100 bill was burned in a solution containing lithium chloride, uh, which has a slight violet color due to the lithium. So I don't know if you noticed that, but that, that might have been a characteristic uh, observation uh, that you saw on that one. So I hope you enjoyed burning money. Um, and that's why I've got such a cool hat, because of course, we like to burn money in chemistry. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope you enjoyed this explanation. Please give me a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time for more cool chemistry demonstrations. Bye for now.